Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dan from uh, CPU. Uh, okay, today I just uh, would like to going to talk about the tomography by uh, retrieval methods based for a very difficult um, scenario in a mountainous tropical forest. Okay, the framework of this uh, work is uh, the biomass missions, which is the, the first ever event in the space uh, for, um, for coming. And first, uh, it, it, it is interesting for, for the ESA because basically the ESA command, the tomography uh, is uh, an uh, innovation uh, of the mission expect and highly consider this uh, a desirable feature. Uh, oh, and now the biomass mission is on the phase B1. In this the tomography phase, it decided to, for one year operation, resulting in one global coverage. So, uh, uh, it's, it, uh, so it is interesting because uh, basically we have to pay more, night, uh, more than 90 kilograms heavier than the baseline. Okay, it is interesting. Let's try to explain what can tomography print to biomass. Uh, let's first analyze when we stay close to the target airborne tomography. We can do it with, uh, with aircraft like the case in the Trobisa campaign in 2009 in uh, in both sides, in Parku and Duras. So uh, ba basically that's uh, because we are stay close to the target, so we have uh, a lot of power, a lot of bandwidth. And uh, so really that's what I'm going to, to show you is not exactly implicate for what we can expect from the biomass because it's just less light, less power, less bandwidth, especially with the biomass, we have just have a 6 megahertz bandwidth allocated by the RTU. So, uh, 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 but uh, anyway, that uh, what we can do is uh, uh, we uh, we can show something that uh, we can get, we can expect from the ideal scenario in the airborne tomography, and then uh, my scope we where we will we, if we move from this uh, scenario to the satellite scenario, still think the uh, can can be implicated or not? Okay. Uh, tomography is uh, quite easy. Just uh, visit the site until we can uh, learn what we care about. It's quite, it, there is nothing really difficult here, but just uh, one thing that before, before carrying the tomography analysis, we have to take into account at least one, one factor. That's what we call the phase calibration issues. That's because in the tomography analysis, the, what we want, what we're interested in is the vertical directions. So in this way, we have to remove the topography, uh, contrib uh, the topography contribution by uh, referring uh, its layer to a certain height above the ground rather than to a fixed preference. So, and the second is that uh, the, the phase disturbance can be uh, resulted from the uncompensated mo uh, motion of the platform. And then, uh, and this uh, can be a right to the um, blurring phenomena. Of course, that's the blurring phenomena can be uh, caused by, by the baseline distribution, but we can do some uh, lining interpolation and can remove it. So basically, that the effect can be cried out in the interferometric phase associated with the ground level, or what we call the ground phase. Uh, so this term is uh, accounted for the, uh, the distal elevation model, and this one is accounted for the phase determined from the uh, the uncompensated uh, platform motions. So basically, that what we do for the phase calibration problem is we try to estimate this graph phase, and then uh, we do the calibration by removing this phase from the original data. How can we do that? So basically, that we explore the information from the uh, interferometric. Uh, uh, point of view and the bollering metric point of view, and then we can describe it by the sum up to chronic products, and basically we can associate it to the crowd contribution and the volume contribution uh, by by the by the frameworks of uh, uh, sum up chronic products. Mathematically, it's just uh, we do the singular decomposition, and we keep just to maximum single uh, to maximum eigen value, and then we can describe the volume or the contribution like like we can see something like in the tomogram like this one, and then we can see, describe also the 
the crowd early contribution, like we see the early topographic here. And then the second step of the phase calibration, which is we take the phase of this crowd contribution and we remove it from the original data and we can remove and we can and, and, and we can uh, uh, refer the contribution in the vertical to above the crowd rather than to a fixed frame from here. And of course, because the graph phase also includes the phase determined from the platform motion, so by removing this way, we can have the cor we can have the correct uh, focusing in the vertical. And just remark you that because we we remove the phase associated to the graph from the original data, so accordingly, that the local envelope, um, the local elevation of the terrain uh, of the, will be. Uh, Flatten to Eurometer, so here after we always refer that Eurometer to the ground level regardless of the actual topography. Okay, after we remove the graph phase, basically we can write out this relationship between the multi baseline data and the, and the cross plane uh, uh, C data here by basically it constitutes uh, this is the multi baseline data, this is the multi baseline data. And this is the, the cross frame uh, data. Basically, it constitutes a Fourier trans, a Fourier pair here. So, from this, we can uh, do some uh, typical tomographic analysis, like the carbon, a Fourier, whatever, whatever we want. But interestingly, that if we take the Fourier transform uh, at a certain uh, space of frequency, and then we can make a multi-layer image here. So. And we are able to show you that some example that's from uh, a job inside. We can have some uh, like this one in the thermogram in the particle one here. The, the rest, uh, the, the white one here is the LIDAR uh, in situ measurements. And because we do the phase calibration, so we, we bring the TRN to Eurometer. So we see, we see that in Eurometer here, it, it refers to the, uh, the crowd. But remember that the crowd here, we have the crowd, basically, we have sure. But we bring it already to Eurometer to for what to to easy interpretation of the result, and basically we see that the the contribution from the ground and from the economy, and we see that the tomogram fits very well with the lidar data. And on the below, we can uh, we we can also able to uh, to show a uh, a reflector of the of the tower, which is very famous. We develop, you hear about it from the Chobiscat data. We can see that we can see uh, layer by layer of the, vert, of the vertical and free activity of the tower here. Okay, so uh, the tomography of the barrico is nice, but uh, fortunately, unfortunately, that the tomography in barrico is quite gentle. So la, let's extend it to all the slope. We move to the neural side. This is very hilly terrain with the absolute uh, slope and be up to 20 or 30 degree. So it's uh, very terrible. So the slope is terrible, but why slope is terrible? Because with the slope, we don't have the buffers by here on. It means that we, uh, we don't have the, it means that we, the, the, the bus scatter can go everywhere. It means you can expect that the, the contribution of the specter as you know, that is not important, but it, it is still important in terms of the power you are receiving. So it, basically, it's telling us the story we don't want to hear, but it means that things will be more difficult with the slope. But even with the slope, we can do something like, like I mentioned before, we do the phase calibration, we see the ground contributions. So basically, it's just uh, uh, the singular, the, a singular decomposition keeping to, to maximum uh, Egan value, and then we can associate with the crowd and the economy co contribution based on the Bollori matrix bond of view and interferon matrix payoff view. So uh, this slide is just uh, the LIDAR top high measurements, and we show here the, the spectrum of the crowd and the spectrum of the volume. So basically, we see uh, the contribution of the crowd is locked to the crowd, and then the contribution of the volume just we see the contribution something above the crowd only. It means that uh, we see on the ground here and on the canopy here, it's totally independent because we separate it completely. And then we see, uh, interesting, we see that the ground 
uh, spectrum here, we see that the phase almost lock located on the ground. It means that it's telling us that the phase, uh, the, uh, the phase uh, separation is perfect. So what we do with the phase collaboration is we take the phase and then we remove it from the data and then we, we, we have something interaction between the crowd and the volume like this one. So we saw it in the different channel, carbon SF and the crossbone SV, shoot us with the carbon we see a lot in the crowd because it's, uh, it's better penetration, but sometimes we see more on the volume also. Uh, the other one we see, sure that we see more on also on the ground, but, uh, but for sure that's more than in the volume as expected. But uh, to, to play the result in a perspective, we provide another profile from uh, Borean Forest. It is a different kind of uh, forest structure with a forest high about 15 meter. So we see that basically the scattering is just locked on the ground only. It's different from the, tro the tropical forest. We see a lot of contribution from the economy, from the volume. But in the boring forest, because the forest is very low, we just see the face center locked to the ground only. So uh, the, the white one here is the LiDAR data. So we can see that if we uh, see closely the thermogram here we see the lidar is something between the the uh, the the red and the green here it, so if we take the examination of the thermo, of the thermogram here we can divide the forest top high and this is the results so uh, basically that we can retrieve directly forest top high by just uh, uh, study the uh, the shape of the three dimension back scatter at each location and then we can derive some if, uh, the information of the forest top high, like this one. This one from uh, LIDAR, uh, LIDAR tomography, and this is related uh, errors when we compare by this uh, equation, sim uh, simple equations. This is just uh, the cross contribution from the LIDAR and from tomography. So we can see that uh, the, uh, the, fr uh, the consistent between from 20 to, to 40 meters, which is exactly consistent with the forest stop high which we expected in uh, Lura. So uh, the estimation appeared to be reliable for vegetation layer ranging about 20 meters to 40 meters. And uh, for, this ride, for this rent high, we estimate the standard deviation is about less than four, meet, four meters. So move to what we want here. We want what? We want biomass. Why we want biomass? Because uh, basically, that is the, the, uh, the, the main objective of the biomass mission. So just before going to the thermal cell, what we can do with the biomass, we turn back to the traditional cell. So basically, with the traditional cell, we don't have the vertical information. We just have one here. So uh, uh, here, which I saw here in the horizontal, it, uh, the, the biomass from 200 down by hectare to 600 down by hectare, very dense uh, forest. The vertical is just the radar productivity uh, of the radar. So we see basically it has some correlation because at the B-bands we see something, but the correlation is in us enough. Uh, CAP say is a little bit uh, saturation. So if we move to the, the thermal side, we have, now we, have a, we can separate layer by layer. It means we have information in the vertical. So on the crowd here, we see the, uh, the relationship uh, of the biomass and the radar here. We see uh, going from about 200 tons per hectare to 600 tons per hectare, the productivity of the ground, or at least the productivity locked to the ground, uh, not even doesn't change, but sometimes it goes down. Because why? Because there is a good reason, because there is less energy go to the ground. So, and then it's reasonable to, uh, to don't have the uh, uh, above uh, a good correlation. So, and then we, because with the tomography, we can go layer by layer. So we do the correlation layer by layer. We see what really is there and we find one layer that's it, that the, where the biomass and the radar reflectivity grow in together. And we see that is the 30 meter. So we see here with the 30 meter with, uh, in both uh, Paraku and Nura forest, it has very good uh, correlation. Why? Because at the 30 meter, we, we can remove 
the contribution from the crowd, and because it's the crowd, and we don't know. It can be the double bow, single bow, it can be the crowd, it can be the soil monster, we don't know. But what we can do, we get, try to get rid of the crowd, and then we move to the up layer, and while the 30 meter is quite, uh, it uh, has, high, um, has high correlation, because basically we find out that uh, there is uh, a good correlation between the 20 to 40 meter to the total biomass of the forest. So, uh, it here we just try to generate the methodology, just basically try to, to cross using the method, uh, methodology uh, developed in, uh, in Barco, and then we apply it in uh, Nura, and then we do it uh, 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 by Verso, and then basically we see the same results. Uh, for more detailed discussion, we, uh, we refer to uh, our previous publication, uh, one in the uh, transition and the other still under division in the remote sensing of environments. But that is the result. What we can do is a just airborne tomography. So we have to try to figure it out, try to implicate to the biomass mission. Uh, so because in biomass mission we lose a lot in the resolution, so we lose a lot of number of loops. So we have to increase the, the plot size from uh, one hectare to about four hectare or more to to have a number of loops and to and and can get uh, the robust results. For this case, I we use the plus side. Uh, all we have have from the barcode is 250 to 250. In this case, we just uh, reduce from about 84 sample plots into sample plot to just 16. And for the biomass uh, uh, reducing uh, resolution, we have two approaches. The first is just uh, using the uh, airborne data, and we try to back project it into the, uh, the biomass uh, geometry. We say that it is a space geometry. The other one, we just take this one and try to reduce the resolution in azimuth and in rain. So basically, we keep the same geometry we say is airborne geometry. So basically, two methods, we, we see that something similar, and still, we do the same exactly with the with airborne case. It means that we do a layer by layer. We try to find something related to biomass, and we also end up exactly with the 13 uh, meter layer. So the result at the six uh, megahertz in both a frost, uh, showing that uh, the consistent at uh, with uh, the consistent at observed in the in the full bandwidth K, indicating that the 13 meter layer appears to be the most information about about crowd biomass. So I'm ready for my conclusions. So uh, with the B-band, we can see the vertical forest structure. The crowd scattering is visible everywhere. And in fact, we found that whenever the topography is plus, we see double bow. The volume scattering is significantly related to the dense friends biomass from 200 to uh, 600 tons per hectare. And the forest height in red is determined very easy directly from the uh, tomographic profile and it's marked with LIDAR, even in the very difficult tomography scenario. And SAR tomography allows us to map not only the forest vertical structure but also the biomass. And we have true that uh, with the biomass from 200 to 600 tons per hectare, it is more sensitive to the radar reflectivity, even at the 6 megahertz bandwidth at the layer 13 meter layer above the ground. And the uh, tomography uh, biomass retrieval method base is, I uh, have say, transferable and generalized to, can be generalized to all the forest side or at least to zoa forest with a top high about 20 to 40 meters. And that's all. Thank you for your attention.